We're good. All right, these look pretty good for the three bladers. See how they fit. Pretty good. I like that. So here's a piece of plywood, and on this plywood I've marked a center and lines 120 degrees apart. So this will help me line up the blades of the whirly gig, the three blader, because if you divide 360, a circle is 360 degrees. You divide that by three get 120 right so you want these all to be exactly even so it otherwise it'll it'll flop or it won't even spin very much because one side will be really heavy you can see that where I marked with these lines I started at the center I had a protractor and I just took a straight edge and marked three three lines and that will allow me, I'll take the, either the leading or the trailing edge of each one of these with the hub in the center and get these exactly lined up so it'll spin perfectly uh, smoothly. So these hold, this hole is a quarter inch. I get a quarter inch drill bit. Or a little quarter inch drill bit to fit in there. I'm going to test fit first before I put any glue on here. And you don't, you don't have to get these right touching the line, but if you get it on this line here, you can see, you can eyeball it to see that it's parallel. That's close enough if you can just get it parallel there. It doesn't actually have to touch the line. You can see that, no good, no good, but if you just get it nice and parallel, there you go. And then you get that one lined up. Get them right where I want them and then I'll come back, put the glue in, and line them up again. Let the glue dry right there in the jig. I guess you could call that a jig, an alignment jig. I do this with all my three bladers. Two. Here. Another thing you want to think about is that they're all on the same plane so that you don't have one blade you know that's sitting out here on a different plane as it goes around. That's kind of that'll be kind of lopsided. So I think I'm going to mark these where I have them and then glue them. One is one. I'm going to mark it. I'm happy with this the way it is now. Here's two. And here's number three. So I'm tracing a little line around the hub. And I'll note that'll help me put the glue on the on the blade. Cool, I got my favorite glue here. I got some tight bond. It's uh, water resistant. Put a little in the hub. I'm gonna do number two first. jig. Alright, now I'm checking this alignment. It's real good. This hub, I, uh, whenever I cut this a long time ago, I could have cut it a little deeper. Give these blades a little more bite to hold on to. But this will be adequate. I'm going to of course, I'll put a pin in these. I'll put a wooden pin to help hold them. I found the, I used to use a, a quarter inch pin. I found the 
uh, a 3 16 works just as well. You have to get it done before the glue sets. So this is going to set aside to dry now. Okay, I've marked the body block with the, uh, on the center line. Just uh, between the inch and a half, two by four, I've marked the center line. T towards the blade, towards the front. Because this is the blade's going to be heavy, and then it'll have a tail in here. So I'm going to drill this. I've got a one quarter inch, nice sharp quarter inch drill bit. Just going to bring it down here that far. And this drill press from Harbor Freight has a stop on it that you can set. That'll take a one quarter inch bushing with a 3 16 hole. Okay, now I'm going to slot the body out on the back. I'm going to have, I haven't quite decided, but I'm going to have a fin on the back. There's my notch. So here's the three blade propeller. It's still on the uh, drying jig. So here's the propeller. It's all glued. It's a big one. So that's that's all glued and dry and strong. The next thing I wanted to show you, this is going to be the tail. So yesterday I cut the slot there. I've decided I needed, with the size of these blades, I'm going to need a big tail. So I took two of the thin sections from, from making blades and I glued them together. I have some wax paper here with the shiny side, the wax side up. And then I just I put a, a bead of glue on there and then held them together, pressed them down. I put the, but this sander is really heavy so I just laid it right on top of here and hold it tight. I've got some leftover strips from cutting the blades. From, these are two by four pieces. I glue these on here like this. Give them a little, give it a little more strength. And once I get that glued, I'm going to fit this, going to fit this into the slot here, like this. Of course, it'll go like this, right? And then I'm going to shape this. Going to shape this like the bur the tail of a hawk. After I glue these on, I'm going to cut this out. Try to make it look like the tail of a bird of prey, a hawk or eagle or something like that. There we go on that side. Flip this over. Other ones on here, something like that. Get this a little extra strength. Clamps, Harbor Free clamps, Harbor Free also. This is overkill on this. Perfect. So I'll let that dry before I cut it out and shape it. Tight bond. Clamp for a minimum of 30 minutes. And then do not stretch the joint for 24 hours. So it, it sets up in 30 minutes and it cures in 24 hours. The next step is going to be working out the mechanism that contacts the blade you know where to place it and uh, how to get that I'm going to copy this pretty closely and before I do that I want to drill I mark the center 
of this uh, the whirly gig body so I'm going to drill that out put a pilot hole in there get a screw in there so we can uh, you know where the blades going to touch the the hammer here or whatever it's called well, I don't know what to call this thing the noisemaker hammer okay I've got this marked this is the body of the whirly gig I'm going to drill a pilot hole with your brush. Do this on a drill press. The reason I do this is because I want this uh, hole to be square and straight. So I'm having a little homemade square block here. Just for a quick guide, nice and straight. So now I put the I'll put the screw in and uh, put the propeller on and see how it see how it all lines up. So then I can once I get the propeller on, I can get the exact location of the fitted screw. Okay, so now I've put a quarter inch by three sixteenths bushing in the hub. That's what they look like. So that gives the screw, it prevents the screw from uh, hollowing it out, the metal screw from hollowing it out, the wooden hub. And now I'm just going to screw that into the body of the Whirligig. Hopefully this will go in straight. Left about a quarter inch of play, a little, a little bit of play there, and uh, I've already got a problem. I can see I've hit the blades here. The back of the blade is hitting the edge of the. It's going to hit the edge of the body. So I'm going to have to cut these blades, cut them at about a 45, and give them room to spin all the way around the body. So the first thing I'll do is mark these, and then I'm going to take the blade back off, and then figure out a way to cut these. Close enough. Doesn't have to be perfect right there. And now I'll just zip these off. So I've got this Exacto razor saw. It's really old, but these things are great. They last forever. I've even cut thin metal with this. I'm doing all this ahead so I can get the cam in the right place. Just leaving a little space there. Alright. Much better. Gonna have, it's still going to have to lose, use a little. Still bumping up a little bit on the edge there, so I might have to taper these a little bit. I could do that. It's just catching. So I could take that back off and use the band off and the sander to smooth those up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just nip, nip these 45 on each side. Then we'll just move out the sander here real quick. That looks pretty good. Now let's see if it's going to work on the blades.
Beautiful. So it's not hitting at all now. All right, now we can move on to the next step, which is considering the placement of the cam. So this is the original cam. And I'm going to make it out of this piece of, uh, this is like almost half inch by three quarter wood. It's going to be uh, stiffer, more rigid. And then I'll cut a slot in the bottom of this and put the striker. It's just a, a three quarter inch washer. Put it inside there. I'll glue it in there. That, that should hold it. Now these stands are just a piece of uh, two by six with a bevel and a stake here, a stand. And I have a another video where I show how to make these stands. It's pretty old, but you know they're pretty straightforward. You just cut them on the table saw, drill a hole, or you can drill, put a nail through the bottom or a screw through the bottom to hold the uh, vertical shaft here, and just make them. <laughs> Be sure you make the shaft long enough to so your blades will clear. Uh, of course, I'm just using this to hold on while I work on it. All right, now, so here's the here's the side of the body. You can see that now, and the striker. I'm calling it the striker now. It's going to go right about here. Going to round off this front. It's an old piece of aluminum channel. I mean, you could you could use a tin can for this, a tuna can, a piece of pipe, a lightweight pipe, anything. So I'll put the hole and the, the length here the same as this one. Give it a tap to mark where the hole should be. Give me a little mark. I'm going to drill that out one quarter and then I'll put... I think I'm going to steal this the bushing from this one. It's a little brass, just a little piece of brass tubing. Okay, so I'm just putting a piece of backup wood on here so I don't accidentally drill through something I don't want to drill through. There's that. Push the bearing out. Makes it easy. That's all it is. All right, so that's being stubborn. I've got a method on that. I'm going to take this quarter inch out, three sixteenths bit. I'll use this as a guide. I'll slide it on there. All right, I'll sand that off a little bit. There we go. This will contact the blade. Okay, so I'm going to use the table saw to cut a slot in the center of this for the for the washer. More noise. A little louder to get those scatty birds out of there so they won't eat my tomatoes. I just want this to be high enough to to bury this washer about halfway, okay? Just gonna go part way in. Perfect. We got the glue gun ready. So 
squeegee a little glue down in there. Get the washer. Look at that. Now the the next step is to get everything lined up beside where I'm going to put the striker, the cam, and the the noise maker, the box. I don't want this to be touching right on the wood. So I've got a little spacer that I found. I think it was at the hardware store, I'm not sure, but I found it laying around here. It's going to go like that. The blades will come by, bump the wood. I think that's good. Go to the 316th drill bit again and make a mark. Probably not the best, but for these purposes it will work. There we go. See the mark there? Oh, I'm going to have to take this propeller off again because it just gets in the way and I want to use a drill press. That should get it started. Like this. That's a number nine wood screw, two inch number nine, right there. Here it is, a little spacer. Now I have to decide where to mount this, the clinker. Uh, I don't want it to interfere with the tail plane, the tail blade. So I'll stick this in place temporarily. Already got some holes in there. See how that's working? Here's the propeller, on my finger is the propeller blade. Alright, so that puts this right here. So I've already got a hole in there. I'm going to go ahead and drill that through. Alright. So back to the drill press. Just a pilot hole. I'm gonna mark this one with a drill, drill bit. Got a mark. Right there. This one's just gonna be a pilot, so I have a I have a small drill bit in here and I'll just Drilled. Okay, I've got a three inch, just a three inch construction screw I found laying around. And I'm going to put a little piece of foam between the bell or whatever this thing is, the sounder, and the wood to hopefully you want to kind of insulate it so that the wood doesn't mute the sound. Alright, let's put it together, see what happens. Okay. 
get this here. Oh, that reminds me, before I put this on, I want to put my bushing in here. I've got some of these little BBs. I'm going to drop one down inside there. And then I'll put my, my inch and a quarter bushing. Like that. Push it in there. Got this uh, quarter inch bushing. Quarter inch OD, three sixteenths ID. Now I can put this up on here. And with that BB, when it hits there, it will. Here comes the propeller. that's got rust on it. Hmm, it could work. Alright, now we're back over to the tailpiece and I'm gonna tr trim this up, make it look like a bird somehow. Just take the pencil and sketch something out. So, when you think of a bird tail, Kind of was going to come like this. This will be curved. And then into this. Something like that. Maybe when I cut this off, I'll use this piece over here to get it symmetrical. It's going to be, I want it to be kind of scalloped. In and out. So I have some little cuts here. Hmm. Might be able to cut those with a small I'll do that. Cut these out. Zip, 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 and then sand round them between. So I flip this piece over from here. They cut off here. I'll flip it over and put it right on here. And I drew the line. Get these two sides exact. And now for these, I'm going to use the, the hole saw. And then sand them. Most everybody's garage got one of these laying around. Snug it up. You really don't have to get it too tight. Not sure how this is gonna work because all right, I've got a, a lot of little discs like all crammed up in here now, so I've got to take this apart and get them all out. So see how that's all jammed up. Nice and clean. There we go. There's my big bad bird wing.
Look at that. Strange. <laughs> Alrighty. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill a quarter inch hole in here all the way through. Put a dowel. That way if I want to take it apart later, I can. Now I'll drill a quarter inch hole. I'll drill a quarter inch hole right here in the center. Go through this. I can't go so far that it goes over like that. So I'm going to have to put a stop up here, I think. I'll put it on the sawhorse, take it out. It's a breezy day. I fixed a broom handle here. I sawed off and I drilled a hole in the sawhorse. And I've got a 3 16 pin. See what happens. Hey, it works. A little bit of a problem there. That'll drive your neighbors crazy. 